claim I'll be responding to is that technology is currently negatively affecting the way humans think. I'm refuting the claims that the dependence people have on technology has caused them to use their brains less. My opposing speaker claims that at a young age, children who are exposed to the internet start having issues with their personality and relationship status. She also claims that like children, students have a difficult time in school with classmates, professors, teachers, and assignments after spending so much time relying on the internet for answering them. I refute these claims by claiming that early access to technology is in fact beneficial to human intelligence. My response to my opposition's first claim involves a text citation that is taken out of context to a degree. Her speech cites a Huffington Post article entitled, Studies Show That Millennials Are More Forgetful Than Seniors. She recites that 39% of us have forgotten or misplaced something in the past week. This may seem to tie in well with her claim, but the context does not match. The website elaborates on this claim with Patricia Gutentag, a family and occupational therapist, pointed the finger at stress in a statement released by the trending machine. Stress often leads to forgetfulness, decision, depression, and poor judgment, she said. We find higher rates of ADHD diagnosis in young adults. This is a population that has grown compounded by lack of sleep, all of which results in high levels of forgetfulness. The article portrays stress, not technology, as the cause of negative effect on human thinking. My opposition cites Betty Sparrow's research on individuals showing that people are more likely to remember things when they think they won't be able to find the answers on the computer. Similar to the last citation, this article paints a different picture when you really look into it. We've come to use our laptops, tablets, and smartphones as a form of external or transactive memory where information is stored collectively outside ours, uh, outside of ourselves, the article explains. We're becoming symbiotic with our computer tools, growing inter into interconnected systems that remember less by knowing information than by knowing where information can be found. Sparrow believes that this new trend might make us smarter because we don't waste energy trying to memorize facts, thereby reserving brain power for understanding the big picture, the article explains. As she told US News and World Report, if you take away the mindset of memorization, it might be that people get more information out of what they are reading, and they might be better able to remember the concept, she explained. My opposition's second claim involves children having issues with their personalities. She claims that children can rage if they don't get their tablets to watch YouTube. This can be true, but still it does not hold any significance. Children act out of line because they are children, not because they use devices. A child who is attached to any item, whether it be a tablet or a stuffed animal, or a toy in general, can lose control when it is taken from them. I'm sure we've all seen uh, examples of tantrums and kids freaking out when they do not get what they want. The belief that exposing young children to modern technology being strictly negative is false. Parenthood.com explains that there are many benefits of allowing children to explore the world of digital technology. They include, but are not limited to, better hand-eye coordination, improved language skill, promoting of school readiness and cognitive development, and higher capacity for visual attention. Her third claim centers around students having a difficult time in school with classmates, professors, teachers, and assignments after having spent so much time on the internet. My opposing speaker claims that students have social anxiety, especially for group work, because they're not used to being around a large crowd for experience for an extended amount of time. I'm sure that, uh, while I'm sure that this claim can be true to a degree, the true cause of the social anxiety is not actually from, uh, it's not actually from uh, any experience with other group members. It is instead from somewhere else. This claim is countered by Medical News Today explaining that social anxiety disorder and social anxiety in general are caused by other elements. The four most common causes are a person's brain structure, the chemicals in their body, the demographics, and different genetic causes. These four causes are contribute, contribute to social anxiety, not technology at a young age. Early access to technology is in fact beneficial to human uh, intelligence. All right, Christian, it was extremely easy to follow everything. You labeled the points clearly, so that's great. Um, 
you gave us a good preview of what the main points were going to be. You basically have a counterclaim that you're giving at the beginning. You're not required to have a counterclaim. Uh, in fact, I think it could, there are only a couple of places where the counterclaim really is applicable, but it was fine to have. Uh, the challenge that you have on the first point is to the evidence and what, in fact, uh, the source of the problem is. I thought it was very good of you to go and look at the advocate's original evidence and see that there was a context issue going on here. And then quoting directly from that source suggests there's inconsistency. This is a good example of um, uh, internal inconsistency, which we talked about as a test of evidence before. And then the same sort of thing about the uh, second quote that's being used there uh, about how people are interacting with it. I, I, you know, the whole idea of people and computers being symbiotic, I thought that was an interesting concept. Uh, in the long run, in essence, it suggests that the evidence that the advocate used on this particular point ultimately arrives at completely different conclusions than the advocate is presenting. And so there's nothing that supports that position that doesn't automatically mean the opposite position. Like I said, uh, you do get to that a little bit at the end. On um, the second point, uh, you know, the you do want to point out that it was just a single hypothetical example that the advocate was presented. I thought you did a good job explaining how it could be anything that a child would rage over in that situation. And then you use your own hypothetical example to illustrate that point. That's okay. Um, the there is a there is a nice quote here about how the uh, access to uh, this t kind of technology does benefit the kids and so that's really supporting your counterclaim early you know that you had at the beginning uh, starting here on that second point and then the same thing occurs a little bit on the third point on the third point you basically have an alternate causality claim um, I'm not exactly sure that you've discounted that whatever proof they had that social anxiety is contributed to by these sorts of things. I don't remember what evidence they had. You do, however, develop a good counterclaim that suggests that these are the four major points. Uh, I, I don't know that that excludes other possible uh, sources of anxiety, uh, but I thought that this was a good way of certainly putting it in context. Uh, you probably want to lose the gum when you're delivering the speech. Sometimes you, you know, it just sounds a little bit awkward when you're talking. All right, thank you.